as of the time of filming, 28.8 million UK citizens, or approximately 43% of the population, are fully double-dose vaccinated against coronavirus. While here in Taiwan, there have only been 782,000 doses administered, of which a very small percentage are the second double dose that fully vaccinates somebody against the virus. And I have to say that considering Taiwan did so well in avoiding the initial import of the virus during 2020, it's pretty embarrassing that we now find ourselves in this situation struggling with vaccinations. And here in Taiwan, we've basically screwed up the vaccination program, so much so that now we are the ones heading into lockdown, while the UK are pretty much doing the opposite, as they are vaccinating people at a rate of hundreds of thousands, as many as half a million vaccines are being administered a day in the UK, compared to the mere tens of thousands that Taiwan are sticking in people's arms each day, meaning that the UK are now well on course to have the entire population vaccinated by their target date of the 31st of July this year, while for Taiwan, the vaccination completion date is anybody's guess. So considering how well Taiwan were previously doing at preventing the virus from entering the country, and of course, considering how much of a head start we had on a vaccine before a significant outbreak of the virus appeared in the country, how have we managed to get the vaccine rollout program so drastically wrong, and what can be done, and what can we learn from the UK in order to get our vaccines up to speed and hopefully get back to some normality as soon as possible. Well, yes, it's absolutely no secret that the UK have absolutely nailed their vaccine rollout program. And I think one of the major reasons for this is just at the speed at which they got the ball rolling on their vaccine plan. In fact, the UK became the first country in the world to approve a vaccine for COVID-19 for emergency use in December 2020. But the groundwork for this had actually been laid almost a year before when the Department of Health and Social Care reportedly began planning a mass vaccination program even before the first case of COVID-19 had appeared in the UK. So despite all of the UK government's failings regarding track and trace and all of the confusion when it came to the rules regarding lockdown that I mentioned in a previous video, behind the scenes, the scientists at Oxford University who would eventually go on to develop the Oxford University AstraZeneca vaccine, they had obviously seen the scale of the problem to come and they actually held a vaccination program meeting back in January. January 2020, before the WHO had even named the virus COVID-19. This early action meant that by July 2020, the government had actually already placed orders for 100 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine, and then a further 40 million doses of Pfizer's vaccine was placed before October 2020. So that's the first thing that the UK government got absolutely right during this crisis. They didn't dilly-dally about waiting to see what would happen. As soon as they knew the vaccine would be available, they placed orders for over 140 million doses, which would have been enough to vaccinate the entire population of the UK. In fact, the UK's hefty vaccine orders were believed to have been in part due to a 2011 film named Contagion. Uh, this movie had been recently watched by UK Health Secretary Matt Hancock, and the plot of the movie was all about how a deadly respiratory virus disease had ravaged the world and killed many people. And towards the end of the movie, countries all around the world were left fighting each other to get their hands on the last few remaining doses. Therefore, when it came time for him to order the AstraZeneca vaccines, he was advised that 30 million would be enough. But because of this movie, apparently, he decided to go all in and order 100 million doses of the vaccine. And that's probably one of the best decisions by a UK politician in a long time. Now, Talking about that movie and talking about countries that are left fighting for the few remaining vaccine doses, that brings us to Taiwan. A country who is now recording its biggest spike in coronavirus cases, despite spending the majority of last year coronavirus free. But now, unfortunately for us here in Taiwan, we are now struggling to get our hands on enough doses of the vaccine to vaccinate the entire population of 23 million plus people. As I mentioned earlier, the vaccination rate is currently in the tens of thousands each day. And I think yesterday, 22,000 people were vaccinated, meaning that of course, if everybody needs two doses of this vaccine, that at that rate of just tens of thousands per day, it's gonna take us a couple of years at least 
to vaccinate the entire population. So it seems to me that there's a couple of things that Taiwan could learn from the UK in order to address this problem. Firstly, I think the UK's biggest weapon in the vaccine program has been speed. Taiwan really needs to increase the speed at which it dishes out these vaccines. Yes, we've got a problem with the number of vaccines. I'm going to come to that later. But the way that the UK have dealt with this problem has been to just go at it full speed ahead and put vaccines as a priority for the country. And I'm sure that Taiwan has the infrastructure and the logistical know-how in order to roll out the vaccine program at the speed that is necessary. But, and here's a big but, all of the infrastructure and all of the logistical know-how in the world is not enough if you don't have enough vaccines. Now, of course, Taiwan and the UK are two very different countries in many different ways. And while Taiwan is indeed a world leader in many areas, including manufacture and technology, Biomedical research is not the first thing you think of when you think of Taiwan. And despite the fact that Taiwanese company Medigen's vaccine is almost ready for emergency use after passing phase two trials earlier this week, it unfortunately has come much later than the vaccines developed by other countries, the UK included. Meaning that if we go back to January the 4th of this year, then in the UK, they had already started vaccinating people. Mr. Brian Pinker was the first UK citizen to receive the vaccine outside of trials whilst here in Taiwan on the 4th of January this year I think everything was hunky-dory and the coronavirus was pretty much a distant memory or a distant thought basically here in Taiwan on January when the UK were vaccinating vaccinations in Taiwan were the furthest thing from anybody's mind we actually didn't start vaccinating here in Taiwan until March when it was actually the politician Su Zentang was the first person in the country to receive the vaccine which again was a very different approach to the UK, whereas the UK put politicians lower down the list and vaccinated the elderly population much earlier. Here in Taiwan, it wasn't that the politicians were putting themselves first and prioritizing themselves over the public. The public just didn't want to get the vaccine. And the politicians were using themselves as kind of guinea pigs saying, look at me, it's okay, I can do it, then you can do it. Generally speaking, the Taiwanese public were just against getting the vaccine, partly due to rumors about about blood clots and the like and other side effects, but the majority of people just had a kind of justified ambivalence. The virus hadn't affected us at all, so why would we bother getting a vaccine for something we don't need? The day I filmed my vaccine video with Rocco, I was actually offered the chance to be vaccinated later on at the day, at the end of the day, because so many people had made appointments and just hadn't turned up for their vaccine. There was a surplus of vaccines and they were offering it to anybody that wanted to pay the $460 or whatever it was. I eventually decided not to do it. First of all, I didn't have time. I wanted to edit the video. And of course, I was just behaving the same way as the Taiwanese population were behaving and just thinking, it's okay, I can wait, no rush. Whereas if we jump back to the UK and make another comparison, the population of the UK, 70 million people had been trapped in their homes because of this virus for almost a year. Many people had lost loved ones and family members. Thousands and thousands of people were affected, jobs had been lost. The virus was having a completely different effect on the UK compared to how it was in Taiwan. So as such, as soon as the vaccine became available in the UK, people were rushing out to get it as soon as they could. Yes, there were some anti-vaxxers and people complaining that it's some government conspiracy, but the majority of smart people went out and got their vaccine when they could. So now that the virus is actually here in Taiwan and it's actually affecting our lives, the demand for the vaccine has gone up and despite having a great network of vaccination sites lots of hospitals and clinics where we can get the vaccine we still don't have enough vaccination doses and this is a hot topic that definitely needs to be discussed so yes not enough vaccines and this is a factor that I'm gonna find it difficult to compare with the UK because the UK doesn't face the kind of tough political diplomatic stresses 
that affects many things here in Taiwan. The amount of vaccines that we have access to here in Taiwan is being directly affected by fraught diplomatic relationships and, as Chen Zhong actually put it himself, political pressure. And let's not beat around the bush. Directly as a result of China's control over the world and their bullying nature, Taiwan has far fewer vaccines available to its population than it should and China is to blame. Simple as that. China is putting political pressure on other countries and other biomedical companies to prevent them from selling their vaccines to Taiwan in order to try and force Taiwan into buying China's vaccine, which actually is against the law. It's illegal to import Chinese-made vaccines into Taiwan, probably for very good reason. And although Chen Zhong didn't give away too many details, but he claims that Taiwan and German biomedical firm BioNTech were close to signing a deal to secure 5 million doses of the vaccine, but he says that that deal fell through and the reason he gives for it falling through is political pressure. And while China of course deny blocking this deal, it's pretty difficult for me to think of any other country in the world that would put political pressure on Taiwan or any other country to prevent citizens being vaccinated. So as a direct result of this political pressure from China, it looks like Taiwan is going to have a much harder time getting its hands on the tens of millions of doses that we need to fight this virus. And in a video where I'm comparing Taiwan to the UK, it seems that the people of the UK could never understand how this feels. To live under the oppression of this big bully that ordinarily we can just laugh off as it maybe prevents us from flying our country's flag at the Olympics or prevents us from getting certain products. But here, the political pressure from China is absolutely affecting people's lives. And it's very possible that Taiwanese people can lose their lives as a result of this, which for me just makes me feel, I don't know whether it's angry or sad or whatever it is, it's just, it just shouldn't happen. But thankfully, Taiwan does have lots of allies all around the world. And we've so far managed to get our hands on about 2.8 million vaccine doses. And that's largely in part to two huge donations. There was America who sent 750,000 in a military plane and then Japan sent 1.2 million and later a couple of days later their president was very happy to label Taiwan as a country but until our own vaccine becomes available we are still probably going to need a little bit more diplomatic help to prevent us from having orders cancelled as it was with the BioNTech order. Apparently according to the CDC website Taiwan has already pre-purchased 20 million doses of AstraZeneca and Moderna and ordered another 10 million doses from Taiwanese companies Medigen and United Biomedical as and when they become available. Meaning that as long as no more political pressure affects those deals that we've got with the overseas companies that we should have enough doses to get the whole population vaccinated and we can move on with our lives, move forwards and hopefully put the coronavirus in our distant memory. One question I'd like to ask you guys before I go is how do you think Taiwan has performed in terms of rolling out this vaccine program? Is it all due to not having enough doses of the vaccine or are there some mistakes that the governments have made? I'm sure you'd like to have your say in the comment section down below and I want to say that I'm not an expert on this situation. I've just tried to compile some of the information that I've been reading from newspapers, online research articles and trying to compile it here and make sense of it in this video. I hope everybody is staying safe and staying sane during this soft lockdown. Um, if you get the chance to get your vaccine, then please go get it as soon as possible so that me and Prozzi can get back in the pub and regain some sense of normality in our lives. But time to say goodbye. So as for now and as always, I'll see you next time in my life in Taiwan. Peace. Bye-bye.